today we'll continue our mechanics of materials review part 2 so without further ado let's get into it the shear strain formula is um, similar to the formula of uniaxial loading except that here the Young modulus E is replaced by the shear modulus J so here gamma equal 2 over J where gamma is the strain, 2 is the shear stress, and J is the shear modulus. So let's start the first uh, practice problem of this uh, review. So we have a steel plate uh, with the following dimensions, 10 inches. Uh, so 10 inches, so here we have 10 inches multiply by 8 inches and multiply by 2 inches so 2 inches is uh, the thickness so let's draw here the uh, 3D geometry of the box so here we have 2 inches and this uh, box is subjected to a force F here at the top that is equal to 50,000 pounds or 50 kilopounds. So given that the shear modulus is 12 times 10 to the 6th power pound per square inch, the deflection in inches of the steel plate is most nearly which? So here the deflection is this deflection here and we want to calculate this deflection so before doing anything let's understand the concepts here so we have uh, we have here uh, a plate that is that was rectangular so that was a box uh, and after applying this force here the plate will deform to this parallelogram here so instead of the rectangle the form will be parallelogram so this is our final deformation so and we can measure this deformation by this deflection delta so because we have the strain related to the stress in J we need to find a relation between delta and this uh, gamma here so by definition gamma is delta over this this length here which is equal in our case to 8 inches so in other words delta is gamma multiplied by 8 inches so all we need now to calculate is gamma in order to find the good answer so gamma using this formula here is the stress over J but the stress is the force over the area and the area here is this area so we are assuming that F is uh, will create a uniform distribution of stresses over this area which uh, is an assumption here it may not be true but for the sake of the FE exam this assumption is always true uh, if it's not explicitly stated uh, if the opposite is not explicitly stated because the FE exam questions are simple and their aim is to measure the foundations and not to, to do complicated things so here just plug in the numbers so we have 50 thousand pounds over so we have here 2 and this dimension here is 10 so we have 2 inches multiplied by 10 so it means square inches and now let's finally calculate our gamma so it's 50 thousands 2 multiplied by 10 multiplied by this value here 12 10 to the power 6 and 10 to the power 6 but before we need to check that the units are coherent so here we have pounds here we have square inches and here we have pounds and square inches so everything will cancel out 
And finally, we have gamma without units, which is coherent with the physical meaning of gamma. So let's do the, let's use the calculator here. Over 12, 20. Okay. So finally, I found a value of 2.0810. Minus 4. And finally, our answer here, our delta will be this value multiplied by 8 inches, so which is equal to 1.6710 multiplied by 10 minus 3 inches. So now we'll uh, talk about torsion and in the field of solid mechanics torsion is the twisting of an object uh, due to an applied torque. So here the applied torque is in blue and you notice the twisting of the, the section in this photo. This torsion produces tangential stresses that are expressed in page 130 of the handbook 10.1 for solid and thick walled uh, shafts solid circular and thick wall shafts and the formula is as follow we have tau which is the stress is equal to the torque so this moment uh, that is uh, so uh, in blue here this moment uh, around the longitudinal axis of the of the of this uh, beam here uh, r uh, will explain it in the following slides and g is the polar moment of inertia and um, this value describes how easy to twist this section. So if J is high, it's very difficult to twist this section. On the other hand, if J is low, it will be very easy to twist the section. So let's start by the solid uh, circular uh, sections or what we can call the disc. So here, what you have to notice is that R in this equation here is not a constant it's variable and it varies from zero to the radius of the the disk and let's analyze the stresses when r equals zero the stress is zero and the stress increases so here the tangential stresses increases as long as we move from zero to r and the maximum value will be at the edge of the disk when this value here r is equal to the radius of the disk so the maximum value of the stress in that case is the torque which is this moment here that tends to twist the section multiplied by the radius of the the disk over j the polar moment of inertia and if you want the polar moment of inertia for this shape you have to go to page 112 of the handbook so let's move to this page right now so in order to find the polar moment of inertia you have just to look for the static section but since the tables are the end of the static section you can move to dynamics and just go back one page and you will find all the values you need here so um, we have here for the disk or for the circle you will have the j the area moment of inertia which is equal to p multiplied by the radius to the fourth power over two but i want to move uh, to go so far and analyze this because we will talk in a moment about the thick walled shafts and you notice that the formula is very similar but instead of the radius to the power four we have the external radius minus the internal radius and you notice that from this formula, you can obtain this one by just giving b equals zero, because in the circular uh, shapes, we have the internal, mo uh, the internal radius equal to zero. So I invite you to, uh, to memorize this formula, and from this formula, derive this one, because uh, in the FE exam, you will either have, I think, um, you will either have this one or this one. So, um, if you can memorize it, it will uh, help you uh, gain a lot of seconds. 
So now let's move to the slides again. So now let's analyze the second case, uh, which is the thick walled shafts. And let's, um, according to the manual, this is uh, this means that the thickness is more than 10% or 0.1 the internal radius. So here you have the so our area is this. So this is our thick wall. And the thickness is this value here. So if we have the thickness is more than 10% radius, we have a thick wall. In the other hand, if the thickness is less than 10% uh, of the radius, then we have what we call a thin wall uh, structure. So here, uh, we have a distribution that is similar to what we saw before. So zero at the, the center, and we have a maximum value at the edge. But here we have to stop at the internal radius because here there is no matter. There is no structure that will resist the torsion. So actually what we have, the distribution will be like this. From uh, um, a minimum value, when r is equal to the anterior radius so this is the minimum value which is equal to t r e over j to the next stream value maximum value will when r is equal to the external radius so this is t max equal t r uh, exterior over j and the uh, variation will be linear from this value to this value and of course as we saw before the g is equal to p um, over 2 multiplied by exterior radius minus internal radius and as I said if you replace r a by 0 in the case of a solid a circular solid you will find the moment of the polar moment of inertia of circular solid uh, shapes so now let's uh, do a uh, practice problem. Okay, so we have um, a hollow shaft, 30 inch long, is fixed or clamped at one end and subject to a torque, uh, this, what is it, that is equal to 6 kilopounds inches at the free end here. The inner diameter is 1.5 inch which means that the inner radius or the internal radius is uh, 0.75 inches and the external or the outer diameter is equal to 2 inches which means that the external uh, radius is equal to 1 inch and we are looking for the maximum shear in this uh, problem so let's uh, start by our formula here So we have this formula, so we have the stress is equal to the torque multiplied by here we are looking for the maximum shear, so we have to maximize R, so we, are, we choose the external radius over J. And we have the torque is equal to 6,000 pound inches, the external radius is equal to 1 inch, and the polar moment of inertia is equal to P over 2 external radius minus internal radius so which is equal to p over 2 um, 1 minus 0 0.754 inch to the fourth power so let's check the unit so we'll have pound inch multiplied by inch which is pound inch square over inch 4 so the result will be in pound uh, per inch per square inch per inch square which can be written as pound per square inch and let's uh, just uh, plug in the numbers here in the equation using the calculator so we have six thousandths multiplied by 1 over p over 2 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.75 to the fourth power and the result is 5 5 so finally the stress is the maximum stress is 5 5 8 7 
0.7 psi or pound per square per square inch. So now let's uh, look at the principal stresses. And the first thing that we have to ask ourselves, why are we looking for principal stresses? So let's uh, take an infinitesimal element, uh, this element here, and with this state of constraints, this state of stresses, tensile stresses and shear stresses. The question that we are looking to answer, answer here are these stresses maximum or not? So that's why if we start to rotate this elements, this stresses will uh, vary. So some stresses will increase, others will decrease. And the principal stresses gives us the maximum tensile stresses that this element will uh, support uh, during this rotation and also the maximum shear stress which is very important because when we talk about failure there are two major types of failures failures and the tensile forces and failures and their shear forces depending on the material if it's brittle or ductile so first of all we will I will teach you the sign convention and I will give you a trick to remember it uh, easily and secondly I will show you uh, how to calculate the principal stresses according to the mind. So let's start by the convention, the sign convention here. So let's draw again our elements. So here is our element. As you notice in this in this uh, convention sign, tensile normal forces are positive. So here, let's start by the tensile forces. So this is positive. And of course, for the equilibrium, this one must be sigma x. And sigma y tensile is positive. And for the equilibrium, this must be sigma y. Okay? So for the normal uh, stresses, it's obvious. Let's now look at the shear stresses and here I will give you a trick to remember this very easily. So what you notice here, you have just to remember this first part of the diagram. So tensile uh, shear stress like this is always positive. And now what you notice is that the shear stresses either converge, so like that, they are converging or they are diverging. So we will never have something like that. You will never have a configuration where this uh, arrow arrives here and you will have another arrow here. So this situation is not possible. Whether, whenever you have an arrow here, the other arrow must converge toward this one. And whenever you don't have an arrow here, here you will not have an arrow. Okay? So this becomes, if we use this trick, becomes easier to find other things so here we have an arrow so here we need an arrow okay we need the tip of the arrow and here we don't have a tip of the arrow so here we will not have the tip of, of the arrow and here we have the tip so here we will have the tip so what you have to remember just this thing here and this thing here will help you easily find the other uh, directions positive directions to maintain the equilibrium of this infinitesimal uh, element. So, to summarize, tensile normal stresses are positive and shear stresses uh, in this direction is positive. And if you have the shear stresses and we use the trick, you will find easily the other things. So it seems like this, this is rotating the elements anti-clockwise, but I don't like this convention because it's confusing. If you remember this the way I, I, I taught you, I think it will be easier to find other uh, routes as well. So now let's talk about principal stresses. So as I said before, if you start to rotate this infinitesimal element, you will find an interesting state where the, the tensile, the normal stresses are maximum and minimum. So let's... Um, 
explain this. So if, for example, this is a state where we have the, the infinitesimal here will be like this, so it's a rotation. And for this state, you will have maximum uh, normal stresses here and minimum normal stresses in the other side, or vice versa. It may be in this side the maximum and this side the minimum. And how do we calculate this? We use this formula. So the, the minimum value is, uh, is uh, sigma x plus sigma y over 2 minus this thing here, this guy here. And the maximum value will be sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus this guy here. Okay? And here it's very important to calculate or to uh, use uh, sigma x, sigma y using the sign convention here. So here it's very important to respect the sign convention before computing the principal stresses. So, uh, so let's do a practice problem in order to illustrate all this stuff. Um, so here we have uh, this uh, infinitesimal element su subject to these kind of stresses. So here we have tensile stress of 6,000 uh, pound per square inch and here we have compressive stress of 4,000 pound per square inch. And here we have a shear force of 1000 uh, pounds per square inch. So let's calculate the maximum, the principal stresses. So let's calculate the maximum uh, uh, normal, normal stress, the minimum normal stress. And I will also um, show you how to calculate the maximum uh, shear stress. So the first thing to do before anything else is to find sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy using the sign convention of the handbook. So here we have a tensile force, here we have a tensile, sorry, here we have tensile stress, here we have tensile stress, so it's positive. So here we have plus 6,000 pound per square inch. So let's look to sigma y. So here we have sigma y compressive. So it's um, it's the opposite of what we have in the handbook. So where the, the the sigma y must be a tensile force. So here, sigma y will be minus four thousand psi. And finally, the shear stress is we have the arrow downwards. Here we have the arrow uh, upwards. So it's the opposite, which means that this value here will be minus. 1000 psi okay so this is the most difficult step because the other steps is just plugging and chugging the numbers so if you do this well the following uh, steps will be uh, very easy if you miss a sign here you will of course miss the correct answer so the maximum so let's now calculate the the maximum uh, normal stress is equal to sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y over 2 square plus tau xy square and we will have sigma x six thousandths minus 4 thousandths over 2 plus square root of 6 thousandths and of course we have minus minus will be plus 4 thousandths over 2 square plus minus 1 thousand square so it's interesting to notice that even if you do an error in the sign of the shear stress, you will find the correct answer because this is always squared. So if it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. So finally, we have sigma a equal to, so let's uh, use the calculator here. So we have 2000 over 2 plus the square root of 
6,000 plus 4,000 square over 4 plus 1,000 square. And I found a value of 6099 PSI. Okay, so now let's find uh, sigma b here. So let's find sigma, the minimum uh, uh, tensile, the minimum normal stress. So we sigma x plus sigma y over two minus sigma x minus sigma y over two square plus t x y square so it's the same as here the only difference is here we had plus here we had a minus so if we plug in check we find that it's equal to 2000 over 2 minus square root of 6000 plus 4000 square over 4 plus 1000 square and it's minus minus 4 Zero nine nine psi. So let's analyze this before calculating the. So it means that if we rotate the body, so there will be an angle where we will have the maximum normal uh, stress equals to this to this value here, uh, and the maximum normal stress in the other side will be equal to this and this is uh, will be a tensile force tensile stress sorry and this will be a compressive stress because it's negative okay so for example you may have this following results here where we have here 699 and here 499 or the opposite faces but here you don't have to worry about that generally in the FE exam we ask you to find the to find the results so what you have to pay attention to is the signs that you use here so now let's uh, calculate the maximum The maximum uh, uh, shear stress and according to the handbook this value here is the maximum stress minus the minimum stress over 2 so if we plug in the numbers we have 6099 minus minus so it's plus 4099 over Two, and the final value is 6099 plus 4099 over 2 it's 5099 psi 5099 psi so now that we have determined the maximum stresses that will act on this infinitesimal section we can predict the failure uh, either by uh, normal stresses or by uh, shear uh, shear uh, stresses and as I said before this depends on the uh, nature of the material whether it's tactile or uh, it's a brittle uh, material